Hello and uh, welcome back. And today I have a handheld multimeter. It's uh, from Fluke and it's the 8024A. And uh, it's the second end, of course. Uh, it does switch on. But uh, what I find is that, so this is usually the overload. And it is now in the voltage range, not in the, because this should be the ohms. And this should be the voltage. So we're just going to open it and see what is uh, wrong with it. Yes, here it is. And uh, yeah, also it can use some cleaning. Look at this. It is really more years and years of use, of course. Then, uh, so we're going to open it and then we see if we can... Uh, improve it i can show again here we have the ohms range but as you can see it's in the voltage so it's 20 volts so or it thinks it's more than 20 volt or, no. this is really weird it should say zero for voltage Well, what I have found is that these blocks, you have here this, this, this little block that pushes this cable. Well, I, I will zoom in. This, yeah, this, uh, this whole switch section is connected with this, this cable here. Yeah, it's a kind of flat cable. But it's just pushed to the circuit board with this, uh, yeah, with this plastic thing. So it actually pushes it to the board to make contact. But as you can see, maybe mm, the. The plastic here is broken. So, and because this is broken, it cannot apply the force that is necessary, I think. And that's why the whole switching uh, is not working. So, and let's see if we can, or we solder wires, or maybe I can glue the thing. Uh, let's see what we can do with this. Yes, it's uh, really broken. I have here the plastic, and as you can see, this is just not working anymore. Uh, it needs to apply pressure, and of course, that doesn't work. And here is another crack. So maybe, yeah, if I glue it, will maybe break again. And also the plastic is, is, is old, so that could be a problem. But maybe I can put a metal plate on top that pushes it down. Uh, it has two holes, so maybe my old Meccano kit. Let's see. Well, I cannot find my Meccano, but I have something else here. And uh, but this is too uh, thick and it takes too much space and because there is very, very little space. So I'm thinking now of making it, cutting a little strip of this. Then uh, I put, put that on top just to make it a, a little, and then I just cut it out of course, but just to give it a little bit of a push, maybe that is just enough. So uh, I try this first. So I created a little 
from PCB. This will be the support. And the idea is that it goes exactly on top. And the holes match. And it is a little bit wider to make it more strength, but there was a little something in the way. So I needed to cut out a little thing. And uh, yeah, I will just put that on top. And then hopefully it's strong enough to, to push it. So I put a PCB on top, a little bit of tape around it. That also makes it more uh, rigid. And it keeps the PCB in place. So let's see if it's enough. So here it is. I think uh, it's improved a lot. It looks super clean. The display is very, very clear. And um, well, let's see. I already tried to calibrate it a little bit. It is not that precise, but it's good enough. Uh, and it at least is working again. So it's now in the voltage, 20 volts. We put the two and a half volts first. Well, that's almost two and a half. 5 volts, 7.5, and 10 volts, so that is okay. And if we measure arm resistance, it's a 20k setting, it says 507, and it is indeed 56k. 7k, 8, 9, cool. So uh, that's it, again a uh, repair of a digital multimeter, this time a uh, handhold, and again it was more like mechanical than actually we did uh, electrical repairs. But uh, it's working again, it looks a lot better, I'm happy with the result. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.